let's talk about smartphones. Not so long ago, I lost my old phone, and now I use 10 years old phone. It's Sony Xperia. I totally need a replacement, and I want to talk about this hypothetical phone of the future that I want to see. Smartphones became the necessity of our reality. If you think about it, now people are obligated and being expected to know and do more stuff, more tasks, without getting anything extra back. For example, for years your salary stayed the same, or even became lower, and you are absolutely must to understand how smartphones, computers and technology works. And you must do a lot more tasks than previously only trained specialists could do. Example, banks, government bills, taxes, registrations of property and so on. Modern human can't be imagined without this magic glowing box inside their pockets. For example, me. Talking about modern technology, I love cameras, I love lenses, I love all these modern technologies, but smartphones a lot more than anything else. I find these devices very fascinating, it is really useful, it can help to do a lot more, it can easily replace lots of gadgets and it has computational power of laptops, in my opinion. And these small devices are the main reasons of downfall of larger camera corporations like Sony, Canon, Panasonic, Samsung and so on. Smartphones has completely replaced point and shoots and even some APS-C cameras like these small bodies and I'm filming right now. So I want to talk about all the aspects that I want to see in the nearest future. I'm not talking about 10, 20 years. I'm talking about next couple of years. What I want to see inside these small devices. And first of all, larger amount of ports. I had only one smartphone in 20 years that didn't have 3.5 mm microphone and headphone jack. And uh, I want to see more ports, for example. If we do not get analog audio port, make two USB-C ports. Why only one? For example, one can be used for charging or connecting to external hard drive. Another one can be used for microphone or maybe charging when you on the go. There are multiple ways how it can be very, very useful. It's sad to see that we have only one USB-C port and nothing else. Why? For example, this USB-C port can have audio amplifier for better audio experience. I know that there are lots of talking about how wires are the thing of the past, that future is wireless, and uh, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't think that future is wireless because I am using lots of wireless technology, but wire is more convenient in different situations. Examples are very easy to explain. All wireless devices drain battery from the phone and from itself. Some phones do not have great battery life to begin with. Sometimes they disconnect without any particular reason and having plug and play easy device is very convenient. You can plug microphone, you can plug headphones, you can plug charger, you can plug anything at any time without losing much better life. So I want two USB-C's with audio amplifiers inside. Also I want expandable storage and easily removable battery. Second, I want more efficient battery life. I want more efficient batteries that sustains for longer. I know that large, big devices can give you easily one or two days of use, but not every time I like to use larger phones. I really enjoy using small phones that fit in one hand, that is easily can be operated without any hassles, without any obstacles. For example, sometimes I'm driving my car, I really need to decline call without looking at the phone so much, to look at the road and do some operations. It's very convenient, and there are few new technologies that can provide it. But smartphone manufacturers are not in hurry to implement these nice and sustained batteries in our new phones. 3. Camera models. Everyone loves to take photos on their new iPhone, Samsung, whatever. Whatever device you like. Everyone loves their camera models 
and I want huge improvements in these years. I want every camera module to have closer to one inch sensor and also every sensor to have at least 50 megapixels to get computational 24 megapixels, like for example modern iPhone 15 do this. Megapixels on most phones and mirrorless cameras are not the same as real megapixels. Corporations count Bayer dots as a megapixel and upscale, for example, 3 or 6 megapixels inside 12 or 24 megapixel container. The same can be applied for camera and smartphone screens, but this is another topic. To say shortly, I want smartphones to have debayered 24 megapixels with 1 inch sensor on all camera modules. Fourth feature – full AI control. By full AI control, I mean full AI assistant in your phone. And I'm not talking about some gimmicks like Siri, Bixby, Google Assistant. They're very clunky, they can't understand your context. They do simple stuff, but I'm talking about next gen true IE assistant that can do everything just. They can send messages, they can make tasks in third party applications, they can do everything, control everything inside your phone by simply talking with them. On the 17th of January, Samsung is making their event in Las Vegas and they are advertisement huge AI features. Maybe it will be something close to what I'm talking about, but we will see, we will see. I really miss full AI control that understand what I want from my phone, understand the context of my speech of my words. It's not sci-fi, it's not something very complicated, it's our reality and it will get to our phones sooner or later, but I wish it be here in a couple of years. Fifth, efficient video and audio codex. I do not want to have large file sizes for my photos and videos. I know that, for example, new iPhones can shoot uh, ProRes 422, ProRes RAW, but file sizes are enormous, they are, they are huge. You need to use external SSD to use this feature. But why? Why you need such a hassle in your workflow? Because there are a lot more efficient codecs. For example, on my previous Android I used third-party app that is called MC24 FPS Pro and I easily could choose 10-bit any log curve for example, S-Log, like in Sony cameras, Canon Log, Ari Log. These logs are very identical to these camera manufacturers and I could use it with my phone easily. I can choose 10-bit and uh, most importantly, I could choose bitrate. For example, I could have a very nice balance between image quality, color quality and file sizes that are manageable, that are fast to transfer to my computer, to use it in my work, YouTube workflows, on my several other YouTube channels and channels of my family. Also, large file sizes are pain to operate in the workspaces. For example, if I need to send something via Messenger, WhatsApp, Viber, Google Disk, or make attachment to the email address, it's very painful if we are talking about tens of gigabytes. This is ridiculous. I want nice efficient codecs and small file sizes. For example, HIF files or compressed raw files for the photos and some nice efficient codecs for video, for example, AV1. I'm talking about fifth feature that I want in the smartphone of the future is AV1 video codec in native camera apps. AV1 is free and open source codec that has very nice compression without bringing lots of artifacts and noise. You can have very nice balance between image quality and file sizes. I use AV1 constantly. All my YouTube videos are encoded in AV1 and I want this feature to be in all the modern devices. I use this codec extensively. For example, new RTX 4000 series from Nvidia, they have dedicated AV1 decoders and encoders inside the GPUs. For example, in their laptops, RTX 4090 have double AV1 encoders. If I encode my videos on the AV1, GPUs 
can do this task a lot, a lot faster than modern CPUs and it is very, very convenient. It has extremely nice image quality with even very low bitrate. Six, I want 4K videos in 240 frames per second. I am sick and tired of looking at new smartphones that only have 4K60 for years and years and years. This is very boring. <laughs> for example, Sony smartphones already have 4K image quality with 120 frames per second for years, but modern technologies, processors, sensors allows smartphones to do this. But as I see, this is artificial limitations to prolong so-called innovation. So we get the same stuff year after year after year, just bring us 4K to 40 frames per second, or at least 120. It's not hard. And also I want this feature to be in every camera model that smartphone has. Ultrawide, normal and telephoto camera lens. Come on. 7. More open source software and hardware also. I want to install whatever I want and modify my phone whatever I like. For example, you can have your iPhone, your Samsung as manufacturer established it, but having a choice won't harm anyone. I know that most likely it won't happen. For example, Canon has their old DSLR and mirrorless cameras and there was a group of people that hacked this device, not hacked, but they implemented one firmware, custom firmware, that is called Magic Lantern. It's easy to install, you do not need to remove old Canon's firmware, you do not have to do anything, you just install it on your SD card, you put it inside your camera and it opens lots of possibilities that, for example, Canon just didn't allow for you. You bought your expensive hardware, but you can't use it because of artificially limited or lazy software. It gave Canon cameras second life. They gave them more features. They gave more codecs. They gave them raw recording and image quality was a lot. And I mean a lot better. Better dynamic range, better color rendition and so on. You got time-lapse features you got focus taking and so on. What I want to tell you, for example, if smartphone manufacturers do not want to implement AV1 codecs, they do not want to implement 4K 120 frames per second, they do not want to implement this feature for some reason. Some enthusiasts can do it for themselves. It's like modding community for games. You can easily install mods and applications for your very expensive overpriced and very capable hardware that you bought with your money and you can use its potential for 100 to 100 percent. Modern smartphone manufacturers lock you into their operating systems. Sometimes they lock it by hardware. They have serialization inside their chips, inside their parts. They lock you with software, with their operating system. For example, on Exynos Samsungs, they lock your camera models. And you can shoot, for example, more than 30 frames per second in third-party camera apps. On some of the new iterations, they even locked the telephoto lens for third-party applications, which is very, very frustrating. So I want this closed source tyranny to go, and I want more open source and more freedom inside my device that I own. Eight. I want ease of connection between different devices and operating systems. For example, if I want to buy MacBook and I want to buy, for example, Xiaomi or Samsung phone, I want easy connectivity between them. I know that it is possible and I know that there are workarounds that uh, can be done. For example, I know that you can airdrop between macOS and Android and vice versa. But manufacturers don't want to bother. They want to lock you inside their ecosystem, their device. They want you to buy only their stuff for years and years without going anywhere else. 
Nine. Next thing that I will tell you, I know that it's impossible, we won't see this anytime soon, but it's my fantasy, I still want to express what I want. I want to install any operating system on any device I own. For example, I want to install iOS on my Android hardware, and vice versa, I want to install Android or Linux or Windows Mobile <laughs> on my iPhone device, because like I can install Hackintosh macOS on my laptop and computer. And this is not something wild and out of this world, because you know, if we take Apple for example, their phones use Sony for their camera sensors, they use Samsung for their OLED screens, also they use TSMC manufacturing to produce their processors. TSMC makes processor chips for both Apple and Qualcomm that provides the Snapdragons for almost all of the Android devices. And to tell the truth, all the companies and manufacturers comes from the single source in its core. And I'm a little bit tired of this race for our attention. Tenth. This is last bonus, but I really want this device smartwatches and foldable tablets to completely replace smartphones and laptops. But this is topic for another video. So, to sum up, I want really more noticeable advancement in the camera sector. I want 1 inch sensors, I want 50 megapixel on all camera modules, I want better codecs, better efficiency, and I want manufacturers to move more to the open source and modding community. I see my desires are not very hard to implement. I think that they are reasonable and it will be really nice to see it in maybe 2024. Who knows? I want them immediately this year. But let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I see that smartphone race slow down a lot and and I want to see next logical step in our game. I'm a little bit tired of all of this but also excited because future will bring a lot. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait. You'll see in next 10 years how our society will change in a good and also in a bad way. So please leave a comment down below what you want to see. <laughs> from the modern devices, what you love, what you hate about modern smartphones in not so distant future, maybe this year, maybe next year, and let's have a discussion. Have a nice day!